Oh, hi. Thanks for watching. My name is George Kaiho. I'm from uh, Dallas, Texas, y'all. Uh, today is mid-June. It's getting very hot in Texas. So I'm gonna talk about rum. And do you, not, do you guys know what this is? Looks like a bamboo. I grew up in Japan. A lot of bamboos in Japan. This is sugar cane. Sugar cane plant. It grows like it grows like really tall. Also, uh, it grows in uh, Houston area, the armpit of Texas. Oops, uh, uh, you know, Houston. it grows in Houston too. But uh, this is the source of rum, sugar cane. Rum is made from sugar, sugar cane. All right. So history of rum, number one, I'm gonna talk mostly about sugarcane history. This is really big, so I'm gonna put it aside. All right. So sugarcane plant uh, originally comes from Papua New Guinea, which is right here. Equator is like right here, so it's like very tropical climate, right? Uh, so like, most people like, should like, probably know, but uh, yeah, sugarcane pretty much only grows at a very tropical climate, wherever it's very warm. And it said it originated in Papua New Guinea thousands of years ago. And with trade, people brought it and, like, and eventually it ended up in India and one of the earliest mention about sugarcane is from the Alexander the Great so when Alexander the Great pretty much conquered most of back then the world what well, that was considered the world so it started from Greece and then uh, he defeated Persia and got Egypt. So he, like, from like he basically had like this this part of the world. And uh, on on his notes or story, he saw a sugar cane, and he described the sugar cane as uh, it's it's a honey, but without the help of a bee. Basically, before they discovered sugarcane or like the, the Greek or I mean the Alexander they figure out before it was just honey it's pretty much the only thing that's you taste it and it's sweet uh, until they found sugarcane through trade in, the, in India that oh damn this is like already sweet without the help of a bee this, this thing's really big, I'm gonna put it aside. So that's the earliest mention. So that, by like 300s BC, it was already kind of known in, back then the modern world, so, so to speak. All right, so, but since sugarcane only grows at specific place, like Europe gets stronger and stronger eventually, right? After like the uh, the Crusade and then the the discover age of discovery and that kind of stuff becomes they become stronger. But they couldn't the like, climate wise it's too cold to grow sugarcane. So they have they it was still very expensive. So like the spice, like the cinnamon, nutmeg, like uh, pepper that kind of stuff was of course one of the really big things they wanted to trade and that's what about they sent people to go to india to get the spices and like these islands to get this nutmeg and cloves uh sugar was also something very valuable that they wanted and uh it be 
the story is going to go to Christopher Columbus, which was the guy that discovered uh, the New World. So he had a guess, I mean, it, most people should know, he had a guess that when you go this direction, people think, oh, you're going to just fall off the map. You're going to fall off the edge of the earth. Um, Columbus thought, ah, oh, no, it's going to go and then I can I'm gonna hit China, Japan or China first and then I can go to India. Quick trip. Uh, and then they, they, they didn't know, European people didn't know that this existed. So they, Columbus came to here instead of here, right? That's the famous story. Uh, but whatever, like, he did his voyage, his uh, father-in-law, his wife's father, had properties in the Canary Islands. This is a Spanish property. There are islands around, maybe a little bit more north. But anyways, near near Morocco, there are islands called the Canary Islands. That's, it's supposed to be very beautiful. And that's a tropical climate. They grow sugarcane. So Columbus's father-in-law was actually a sugarcane planter. So when Columbus went out to find India, he actually brought sugarcane uh, sugar plants so that like, he, whenever he was going out, it was already in his intention to, I'm gonna bring this thing and then wherever I land, I'm gonna like, plant it and I'm gonna grow sugarcane so I can sell that to Europe. It was, it was already planned. And yeah, I mean, he, they, he didn't get to India, but we get to today's Caribbean islands. Uh, first island was what? Uh, uh, blanking. San, San Salvador, right? Something like that. Anyways, and the second one is the barber, like, I'm gonna explain it there. Anyways, it was already like from the beginning, like planned, I'm gonna bring sugarcane planted. And it, he, they did it. And Caribbean islands, it's tropical climate, so it grew well. So it was a very success. So like, uh, <clears throat> what's so called the triangle trade, also most you learn in uh, world history, is first like Europeans they had guns so they go sell guns to people in um, West Africa and then they capture slaves they enslave other tribes and then they sell it to the Europeans the Europeans buy them for real cheap and then they ship them to their new plantation because they pretty much killed all the people that were living there from smallpox and all kind of stuff. Uh, and they produce sugar, bring it back to Europe, sell sugar and other stuff. So that's the triangle trade. So sugar, sugar cane, sugar, and sugar product, which is rum, uh, is a very big part of the so-called uh, triangle trade so yeah it's it really it sucks like that's that's where most slaves and african-american people that lives here like they it, it's a result of, of this thing sugar i like rum all right talking about rum and more like today on this video, I'm, I'm talking a lot more a lot more about sugarcane and how it ends up. But uh, next one, I'll talk more about the details or the, the production and stuff. So I'm gonna go over a little bit quicker. Uh, it's, rum is basically made from leftovers of making sugar. So to make sugar, you harvest these guys. These are 
very fibrous. Like, I bought this because I wanted to make this video and it was only like three bucks for this, this thing is cool too. But uh, I don't think I have a way to like get juice. I, it's gonna be very difficult for me to squeeze this. So, but first of all, you harvest these, you squeeze the juice, you kind of feed it into like a, like a thing that, that presses it, presser. You, so you squeeze the juice, the sugary water, and then you heat it up and then you boil it off to boil off the water or liquid. And then what's left over is the solids, right? So that's, that becomes sugar, like powdered sugar that people know, like I got my stuff. Hey. So when you do that, uh, there's always some like liquid that you cannot really make it into solids. So it's like leftover. That's called the molasses. Uh, I don't know, mo most people should have seen molasses at stores. It's like, it looks like black kind of syrupy thing, right? So that, that, that is the leftover from making sugar. That it, it, you can never really make it into solids. So, original rum is you try to make sugar, you make the sugar, and then the leftover goo, you ferment that and then make alcohol. And a pretty interesting thing is uh, because, like, sugarcane was not a form, like, it was. It was not like a thing that they never knew. They knew about it, they, but it's like they couldn't grow it near them. So they knew all about this. So like it was kind of in, in their intention to, uh, okay, when I go to a tropical island, I'm gonna bring sugar cane to make sugar, but I'm gonna also gonna, I know that it's gonna have leftover goo, so I'm also gonna re, produce that leftover goo into something alcoholic so like you can also sell that like so it was all, all planned to make sugar plus make alcohol which is rum so first rum uh there are two theories i like the barbados uh theory just because uh there's a brand called uh mount gay rum which considered to be the the first rum ever produced and I, I like that brand it's it, they're good and Puerto Rico so Barbados is uh, I think British colony Puerto Rico was originally I think uh, Spanish and on on another video I'll talk more about those uh, colonies right they pretty much uh, the Caribbean was like a new territory basically new frontier ish uh, so still today they like they took okay uh spain i'm gonna take uh cuba big island i'm gonna take puerto rico i'm gonna take this island i'm gonna take this island british i'm, I'm gonna take uh barbados i'm gonna take jamaica i'm gonna take this island french i'm gonna take this island, uh, pretty much Portuguese is the only one that doesn't really have it. They have Brazil. It's because of the, uh, I cannot pronounce this in English. I can pronounce it in Japanese. Basically, a Pope, Pope decided, okay, Spain and Portuguese, you can just, you guys split the, split the world. The Portuguese got whatever this side, uh, Spain got whatever this side. But they didn't know how how big America was, so Portuguese was able to get Brazil, but they were not able to get like around this area. So they got they got Asia. That's you know, that's a different story. But uh, sugar going back to sugarcane business, it was really their original plan to plant more and more sugarcane and probably more 
they wanted to get spices from here and implant it over, which eventually happened. But uh, monoculture implantation was really a thing. So going like that, this relates to the triangle trade because they killed off all of the people that lived there and they just plant sugarcane all over the place and they here harvest, make export sugar, make rum too. And then monoculture is where you just plant only one species and then you just do that and you only do one thing. If you do monoculture, you use up the soil, like nutrition from the soil very quickly. So uh, you can only do it for so long and then eventually the, the soil dies and you can't really do much. So that sucks, right? It's not a good thing. But whenever that happened, okay, oh, cannot, doesn't grow anymore. Okay, go to the next island. And then they go to the next island and start all over, all over again. Eventually, they found a, a region that even like monoculture or plantation, all this kind of stuff, even you do this, the land was suitable for uh, growing these guys. And uh, those are still today's uh, sugarcane. Sugarcane, uh, this, this thing's really big. Still today, like famous. Those are, of course, Cuba. We live in the United States. We don't really get Cuban stuff, but uh, one of the world's largest rum company is still Havana Club. It's like worldwide. And then Jamaica, Cuba is like Spanish colony, right? Jamaica is British colony. And then uh, Guinea, just like around here, Guinea has the Demerara River. So these, they, they kind of start to settle down to specific areas where sugarcane grew very well and high quality sugar came out. So I think, yeah, that's about it for today. So it, yeah, we went all over the place, right? It started from New Guinea, went to India and then Middle East. Like, I kind of skipped Egypt, but Egypt was pretty big on sugarcane too because it was like a bit of uh, trading post. And then Europe with the trade and finally landed in the Caribbean. So next time I'll talk more about, I, I'm not going to have this map, I'm going to have more of this map and go into a little bit more details on each plantation, how to make rum, what kind of stuff are considered. So thank you so much.